Hey, this is Coach Hector with Magis, a personal training academy for soccer players located in Memphis, Tennessee. Today, I want to welcome you to another episode of The Offside Show, where our mission is to empower, impact, and help soccer players achieve their goals. Hello, guys. Uh, welcome to another episode of The Offside Show. I'm extremely, extremely excited um, about this guest that I have here with me. Um, I'm just going to give you a little introduction before we get into Kind of what we're going to be talking about. Um, his name is Ronald Garces, and you know he's from Valencia, Venezuela. He's a former professional soccer player where he played for Carabobo FC, Estrella Roja, and Yaracuyanos, some teams in Venezuela. Uh, he also had the opportunity to play in the U20 World Cup in Egypt, representing Venezuela, making him one of the first Venezuelan soccer players to ever play a World Cup, which is, I still remember when I was younger, uh, that was a very big thing. Uh, for us as a country. Um, but now Ronald lives in Miami, Florida, and he's the owner of, and founder of KS Goalkeeper Academy Florida, uh, the leading goalkeeper specific personal training academy in the United States, where they develop important aspects of the game like strong leadership, specific strength, and conditioning for goalkeepers, technical aspects, tactical aspects, and psychological aspects adapted to the player's age and level of the game. And um, without further ado, uh, Ronald, thank you so much for being here and appreciate it again for your time. Hi, Hector. Thank you very much for for having me. Uh, it's 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 a it's a real pleasure to, um, you know, uh, talk about football. That's that's uh, that's that's one of my uh, or our biggest passion in the world. Um, thank you for for having me. I really appreciate every single guest, uh, you know, being here. Um, I'm here to help you guys. I'm here to enjoy the conversation, and and I'm very grateful, very grateful to to be out here and. Um, talk about football. That's what that's what uh, unites awesome. us. That's yeah. what takes us to uh, to encourage ourselves and 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 for sure get the best out of ourselves as people. So um, very very happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I would like to start um with your path uh, of becoming a, a professional player. Um, so I, of course preparing for for this interview I was doing some research on you and kind of like the stuff that you've been doing lately but also what you did before and your path and all of that and I saw that you made your debut your professional debut only you were only 18 years old right and I was actually 17 17 <laughs> my, so 17 years old and yeah. you know I, it's normal to see even younger and more younger players uh, play professional now and make the debut younger, but as a younger age, but I would like to ask you, like, what do you think were some of the aspects of your game, you know, mentally and, and physically that allow you to make your debut at such a young age? You know, I think not many people prepare young players for that stage. Uh, I mean, I think that's just sometimes it just your career puts you there, but nobody tells you like, how's it going to be? What do you need to do? Or like none of that. So I just would like to ask you, what are some aspects that help you mentally and physically to achieve that at such a young age? Okay, so you know, Hector, um, I I think you know over over the years, you know, over the years, um, football has, you know, taking things to a next level. People, you know, study the game. You know, the game by itself just just keeps moving on, right? We got technology. We got people that are more capable. Of of knowing the game we have you know multiple tools that you know now you can you can actually plan a, a, a professional career right you know you got different aspects you got you you know you got the ability of probably hiring a, a whole coaching staff mm -hmm. for you to make the dream right and and still not guaranteed exactly. right so um you know you know my path my journey was the complete opposite right um I had the dream of being a professional footballer, but um, but I never had a plan. Like to be honest, I never had a plan. I I never had a a, a, a multi, you know, a, a, a multi assignment team that would help me reach my goals. Um, I just think I just had my parents, obviously, and I think I go beyond beyond that. I'm I'm a very spiritual guy, and I believe those things happen for a reason. Um, or especially live putting me on that stage. And one thing that is probably my main aspect of life uh, and, and value of my life is pretty much discipline, right? So I was, I was that kind of kid at a young age 
that was obsessed with getting better with every single thing that I had in front. Right. So I was the kind of kid that if a coach tells me that I got to do five reps, well, I was the kind of kid that I will do 20. And then I'll get home, I'll shower, and then I'll go back to a field and then do 20 or 30 more, right? So that was something that I was, like, very natural in me. And um, like I said, uh, I didn't have a plan on this. I didn't have support. I didn't have anything. Um, I just believe that obsession that I had of becoming the best version of myself, and that's that's the main purpose about why I did that and, and why I made goalkeeping an aspect of my life. It doesn't, I mean, loving the game, yes. Um, Passionate about the game, yes. But there's a bigger purpose uh, behind all of that. Um, Especially, you know, at this age when I, you know, I rewind, I go back and I say like, okay, you know, and and especially today as a coach, you know, you coach so many kids and everything. And it's so hard to fire up the passion, so hard to get somebody disciplined, so hard to go to those things, especially when they don't have that or they don't have those things by itself, right? I, I believe I just I was just born with it. I never had my dad telling me or my mom telling me, hey, you got to go work. Hey, you got to yeah. go to the field and train by yourself. Oh, you got to call a coach. Oh, God, you got to, you got to, no, no, no. Like nobody told me those things at my yeah. age, right? Right? So obviously, you know, the, the obsession and becomes or comes from the purpose of that goalkeeping made me a better person. And then when I saw results throughout goalkeeping, well, goalkeeping, it's a very hard position. Well, you know, you can't make mistakes. You got to be extremely disciplined. You got to, yeah. you got to be fit. You know, you got to, you got to manage other people's problems, which, you know, an adult can't even handle it. Well, imagine that for a kid, you know, so yeah. it, you know, it takes you against the wall, you know, for multiple reasons. Right. So uh, I loved I love the, 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 the way goalkeeping threw me that way. And it just like, it, it challenged me on every single aspect of my life, right? So it wasn't only training, but, you know, I had a commitment with my mom, for example, that, okay, if, if I don't get good grades, well, I'm not going to be able to train, right? So if I don't train, well, you're taking the love of my life away from me, right? So, yeah. you know, it, it, find a, it, you know, it found everything was circled into the main purpose of goalkeeping was the main pillar of my personal life. And obviously wow. that, you know, fired up the obsession of wanting more from it. And obviously when you're obsessed with something, um, while other kids were having fun on the game, I was, I, I was just crazy about just getting better on my things, right? So yeah. um, one big thing about it, about the process sector, is that I wasn't the most talented one. I never was the star of the team. I never was the the best profile. I was never the number one pick from a coach. I, w- I never was that kind of guy or that kind of kid, right? But um, I believe from my age, from, I would say from 13 to around, yeah, yeah, from 12 to 15, that's when I made that big, big jump into uh, the number one role on, on every single thing in my life. It wasn't only on goalkeeping. It was mm-hmm. like on every single thing in my life. I'm talking about school. I'm talking about responsibility. I'm talking about like all these multiple things. Adding, also adding the way that, um, you know, I, I come from a very modest family that, to be honest, we didn't have the resources. We didn't have anything. I barely had one pair of gloves for the whole year. And, I, and that was my Christmas gift, right? Mm-hmm. So I had to wash every single glove. I had to wash every single cleat. You know, my, my Christmas clothes were turf cleats that I could use for training and that I could use for practicing wow. other things. Right. So, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's a mix of, it's a, it's a mix of, of, of a bunch of other things, but yeah. you know, by the time I started seeing that this could take me first out of all of that stuff that I would live like a child, you know, and then second, when I saw opportunities for a better life, well, you know, I kind of, I started liking it a lot more, right? Yeah. And I was serious about it. Well, I found something that would retrieve me all what I want, right? So that's yeah. the whole story about how it worked. And it was very, very simple. Like I said, um, I, I was a, uh, I am a very spiritual guy. Uh, I know I was the hardest worker on my team. I know that I was at 15, the, the guy that performed the most. 
I know that I would be the number one on every single thing that and every single task that I have, right? From from speaking to from from learning how to learn uh, how to how to um learn two of uh, two of other different languages, right? I, mm. I studied English when I was around twenty or twenty one in a bus and a book, right? I, I had yeah. eight eight hour trips. I would get open my book, start talking English. When I went to Portugal, well, same thing. Well, someday I, I wanted to go to Portugal for some trials and stuff. Well, I had I had to learn how to speak. Yeah. English, right. No, so, I- Personal growth on 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 every single on every single thing, and obviously when I was making all those things happen, well, once again as a very spiritual guy, I was on a club match. This guy just saw me and he told me, "Well, you know, we want you to come for trials." Uh, I I was around fifteen. No, I was almost sixteen. Yeah, I was almost around sixteen. The guy gave me gets me in trials. I played six, uh, I would say six months with, with, uh, with the 17th of Carao. Um, and then by the end of the year, they, they, um, they, they, they rostered me on the second team, mm-hmm. on the research team. And probably two months after I made, uh, my, 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 my professional debut on the second team with 16, then I played the whole season. And at the end of the season, they finally offered me the, the, the homegrown contract for the, for the, for the first team. Wow. And, um, you know, everything, everything just came very, very quick in a matter of a year. In a matter of a year, um, then I played some preseason games. Um, and then uh, right after the main, uh, the, the main starter of, of the team of Carol was, you know, this legend, uh, Renny Vega, a great, great friend of mine, played in a bunch of countries. You know, w- w- one of the guys that, that, that I respect the most. Um, you know, he taught me a bunch of things, and he was on his prime. Thirty, he was he was around like thirty around there. The guy signs a contract in Turkey, and then they leave me pretty much on the number one spot. So at seventeen, um, I uh, you know I make my my professional debut, and then eight next season, well, it was a powerful team. We we um, we ended up second in the league. Um, you know, we qualified uh, to Copa Libertadores. So I played my first Copa Libertadores when I was 18 years old in, wow. in Ecuador against uh, against um, uh, Nacional in wow. in uh, the Huayta de Quito Stadium. 35, 45,000 people. Um, you know, that's crazy. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. But, you know, like like once again, all that stuff happens in a matter of a year. But uh, I think that action was generated from a bunch of high energy things. And tasks yeah. that I was completing probably ten years before, right? To yeah. be honest, I didn't ever recognize that I was gonna reach that at that age. Never thought about it. Was not on the plan. Was not written. Not just that happened. it just happened. But then over the years, I understand. Oh shit! Well, that's why. <laughs> that's why. That's why it yeah. Yeah. I know. And, and I why. think, I mean, it comes down to one word that you said: is discipline. And 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 yeah. you know, just willing to to put the work, but not only. I mean, you, you drill it down really like perfectly because I think you didn't see it as work. You know, when I hear you yeah. talking and the way you talk, it's like that was just in me. Like, I don't see it as work. I'm just like, I, if I want to be the best one, I just got to do this. And it's normal. And that's it's not so, even a requirement. Yeah. It's and it's just a such a such an important topic because like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it happens. I mean, you mentioned it in the academy with you, like, but it happens with us two here in the academy. Like, it's very rare, those players that, you really do those extra things that matter because I'll be the first one to tell parents like, hey, just the fact that he's working with us and of course he's an extra trainee besides what he does with your team, right. that doesn't mean it's enough. Like it, it's not right. enough. Like it, it's not. Right. But I make it clear like you have to understand like he cannot see this or she cannot see this as like work. This is just like you're so passionate about the game like you love this so much, you love the process so much that it's just you just want to be playing soccer and it just happens that you get better. Right. And and I just think um that's something that, that I mean you don't see much, you know, and, and I think it's such a huge part into making it to that next level, whatever next next level is, you know, for players. Um but I also wanted to ask you, because of course you did all of that and, and then I was talking at the beginning about your experience in the with the national team, the under twenties. Um how was that process? Uh, of you getting selected into that team because again 
for the people that no, don't know, uh, that was a big team for Venezuela. That was the first time ever for Venezuela to qualify for a World Cup. So it was a big thing. So I just would like to know uh, how was the process for you? Um, I personally experienced it in the U-17s uh, in 2013. So I, I know how, how it feels and I know how it was and I was able to experience that. But I just want to get your point of view too because I, I, I want to feel related to you in that end and how it was for you. Awesome. Um, first, uh, I would say it was like the biggest challenge of my life. That's, 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 that's for sure. Um, because, um, you know, two, two, two things like, the, you know, you, you mentioned something about, you know, everybody having a next level. Right. And I believe, you know, the, uh, you know, life by itself, uh, obviously, you know, gives you, gives you messages, it gives you signs, it gives you everything. And obviously it's going to turn into, well, at those, at those levels is, do you meet the international profile? Right. And when we're talking about when you meet the international profile, they're pretty much telling you that, can you compete against a Premier League team? Or can you compete against a Premier League player? Can you compete against the best of the world? Right. So, um, Obviously, that is the next level. That is, or maybe the highest level, <laughs> or maybe the highest level, right? But you know, um, for me, um, it was it was very challenging, extremely, extremely challenging, just for the fact that um, you know when you reach those standards, because you know you got you got two you know two different scenarios in there. You got first, obviously, the pool of players that are well the best of the country, right? You got another pool of players that you don't even know about, but the coaches are looking on the back to try to, to try to bring, you know, to, to get them a passport, right? They're, yeah. they're, they were never Venezuelans, but these are guys that have been playing in Europe. They've been playing in, you know, multiple countries around the world that have no clue about where, where the country is. But, um, you know, it works for them because any national team exposure will just uh, revalue their, their, their careers, right? Yeah. So, and then also, um, after that team is made, you know, after that, you got to beat every, you know, every single one of them. Um, from the goalkeeping side, it's, it's even more challenging, right? Because uh, playing time is everything. Playing time is everything, right? So, you know, minimum requirement at those levels were like, you know, if you're 18 and you're not starting on a first division team, well, you literally have no shot. Yeah. You have no opportunity. You have no opportunity to be, to even compete. But yes, you had talent. Yes, you had guys that I would say they were even better than me, to be honest. There were guys that are even better than me, right? Um, but, um, you know, uh, the standards are, are, are extremely high, right? So luckily at that moment I had, at 18, I would have around more than 40 first division games. Right. So, it, wow. it, you know, it, it, including, you know, including international stages, I was very lucky that the team qualified. So it would give me a little more value. But, um, but, you know, at the end, I was competing against, uh, against other guys that were even starters on, inter you know, in, in other countries. Right. For an example, my <laughs> best friend, Rafael Romay plays in DC right now. Um, this guy is a six, seven guy. <laughs> six seven guy that he can't even like you know he like like and like on the doors he has to put his head down because he can't even fit on a door <laughs> huge massive you know uh guys starting in city at, at at the age of 18 right so you know you're like like the competition just becomes a way different level <laughs> you know it's a way 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 different level right so obviously from the coaching staff now as a coach you understand well i gotta select the guys that are able to to compete uh, at, at international standards, right? So obviously, um, it was a it was a roller coaster. Um, I believe like the main uh, the main aspect about probably me not convincing at the beginning, even if I had all the requirements, was my physical size. Um, I'm a six one guy, right? So uh, at international standards, if I'm go on the goalkeeping side. If you're not minimum six three, well, it's 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 gonna be very very hard to make it, right? So you're considered undersized, right? So 
I would remember they would they would listen they would they would kill me mentally in a way of of uh, of of you know not respecting my, my my spot in a way right because they would they would do whatever it takes to bring guys from Europe or guys that were playing at a higher level so obviously the they would every you know every single training camp they would they would bring a different guy just to look right and I remember I had like when on the, on the final roster. The fi- even when I qualified, even when, when when I qualified to the World Cup, it wasn't even enough, right? They were they were trying to bring somebody else, which is totally understandable. You want to meet a profile. I'm yeah. a professional coach right now. Um, I know I will break a lot of hearts, but but it is what it is. It I know is I break a lot is. of hearts. You want you want to play like that? Well, these are the standards. It's not me. I wish I could help you. It's not personal. Now I understand it obviously from a professional way, but um. You know, I, I I didn't get the notice that I was going into a World Cup until probably one day before. Wow! One day before, That's crazy. after qualifying, after qualifying the team, right? So, um, you know, it it's a uh, it's and 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 being very honest, being very very honest, um, what really made, you know, the coach's decision was that the discipline and all the hard work mentality that I always had because I was that guy in the locker room. Mm-hmm. I was that guy in the locker room. I would, if I wasn't playing, well, I'll support. And if I do, if I see that a team and is not doing something well and he's starting, well, I'm going to go after him. And I'm going to tell him three or four things in the locker room, you like it or not. Right. So I, I, was, yeah. I was that kind of guy. And I know that made the difference between selecting another guy that at the moment that was playing Borussia Dortmund at that time and myself. That was playing in first division in, in, in Venezuela, right? So, um, you know, the bottom line is that uh, discipline and all those things will take you, take you and make make the coach. Yeah, and and I just want to touch on that because I'm, again, I mean, as you're talking, I, I feel a little more and more related to you because, like, I, I sit there, I went through a similar process. Of course, it's totally different the 17s against the 20s. I mean, the under yeah. 20s or the 70s, I mean, the under 20s, all of those guys are playing pro and like yeah. at the highest yeah. level. And I mean, people don't know, but I, I, I forgot. And so I was, when I was researching, I, I remember all the names that you play with. And I was like, oh, shoot, like <laughs> you, you were playing with amazing. I mean, that's, that was a foundation of the full national team for Venezuela yeah. for quite some yeah. time afterwards. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was big. For the next six, so, seven years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you, when you mention about like the team that you think made you make that team, it, I I want to point on that because I I feel the same way. Like I, I was playing with guys in that process, which just like you, it was has that has been the toughest year of my life. <laughs> All yeah, of that because yeah. you didn't know if you're gonna get caught, like stress, you know everything. And but they get the guys that I was playing with, unbelievable. But I was playing with guys that were. I'm 100% sure they were better than me with uh, better than me in certain things like on the field but I remember just like thinking of myself okay how what can I do to make sure like this is my thing like this is my spot I'm not gonna let anybody take it and right, it's just like right. the little things so I, I talked a lot that, about that like the little things make a big difference you know like sure. what you said about going to somebody and just telling them like hey we're here to work that uh, one thing or like as simple as you know, a meeting with the sports psychology and you are the first one in the row and you are the one asking questions, you're the one answering. So, like, I think those things matter and are important. Of course, and of course, like of course. Difference. And, 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 and actually, you know that, um, that you know, football is, is a game of opinions, right? And, you know, bottom, bottom line, at, at, those, at those levels, at those high levels, um, everybody's skilled. Everybody knows how to do the job. Everybody knows how to, you know, kick a ball, in swing, out swing a ball, you know, that, that's, you know, that, that's very, it, it's just very common at that level, right? Um, yeah. A coach at that level is looking for somebody that they can trust, mm. right? And, you know, the questions are, can we trust this guy, right? That's the number one. Two, okay, probably this guy is not the most talented, but what can he add to the team that the other can't? Yeah. Right. So you exactly. make yourself you make yourself reliable to a team. And then the third is how like how like how bad does he want to be here? You know why? Because you know what's difficult? Well, you know him that you're not the first pick. You might you're most likely not gonna play. 
but you still got to go hug a guy that it's beating you up and hitting your, taking your spot every single day. Exactly. But you know, you, you, you gotta really want to be there. <laughs> mm-hmm. You want to really want to be there because I'll, I'll be completely honest. There were, there were days that, that I said, like I had a guy in there. I didn't listen. I didn't even want to talk to him because yeah. I just consider him competition. Yeah. Right. I don't want to talk to you. I want to say anything to you. Like I'm not even listen, but you still got to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, you know, that, that's what a coach would, would, would look like right now. Um, yeah. You know, as, as a professional coach, you know, outside of the Academy, um, I, I also work for, for the MLS team in inter Miami down here. Right. And I'm also part of a staff. Right. And all we're looking for are human capabilities. How is how can this guy add something to the team? Does it, does this guy have an attitude? Does this guy can support his teammates? Is okay if he's not playing? Can he become the best the, or the hardest worker of the team? Mm. How how is his reaction when he's not playing? How is his reaction when he's playing? You know, like all those all those things are what really make the bubble the bubble function and the snowball just to keep going and, and succeeding and things. Right, so you know, no. believe it or not, it's 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 all about attitude. It's all about attitude and how how bad you want it. How bad you exactly. want it? Because yeah. it's and unfortunately, that that's just not something that you can teach somebody. Actually, you don't you can't teach that. You 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 can't teach that. You can't yeah. teach somebody being hungry or something. And you know, over the years, I tried to understand. You know, because for example, after I retired. Well, I don't have any, I don't have any of this anymore, right? So for some period of time, I lost my, you know, I lost my purpose. I lost my, my, my hunger. I was, okay. Found myself lost. Okay. What do I do? You know, how do I keep, you know, getting mad? How do I, and that's something that you can't teach. Yes. I read all the books. Yes. I've listened to all the podcasts. Yes. I tried. And every day that I would do that, I would feel more miserable. I would become fatter because I gained a lot of weight, right? There was, yeah. I became less disciplined and I hated the sport more than ever. <laughs> this is what I mean. So, um, you know, that, that, that is something that you can't teach. So for me, purpose in football is everything. It's a purpose. million dollar question. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to be here? Yeah, like why? why you What's your why? What is your why? It's so, so, that so important. Deep. Right, and I'm done with you know kids and guys telling me I'm a coach because I want to be a pro. No, 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 no. Listen, it doesn't work like that, man. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. why? Wait, wait until you know you go through all of those things so you can actually feel how how it is. Because the reality is this: this is this is a a, a career full of, of frustrations. It's tough. You, you might win just a, a few little things, like a few little tiny things. You might win something. And sometimes you don't even win anything and you have a 15 year career. You don't win anything. So it's been a life full of frustration, right? Yeah. So how, how do I make myself stay at the top when I'm not winning, when I'm not getting results? And then I got to work for so much stuff to kind of see a win, kind of see if you get something. Kind of purpose, man. Huh? Yeah. Purpose. It's all about the purpose. It's all about the purpose. Um, no other way. And you know, I want to switch it around now and and sure. you, you talked a little bit about, you know, purpose and all of that. I mean, and, and talk a little bit more about the academy that you have running. And, and I saw that, you know, you focus, of course, goalkeeper specific, but you focus on technical, tactical, you know, yeah. uh, all these things, which I love. But you also mentioned the the, the confidence, the the a mindset aspect to it so i just wanted to ask you you know how important do you think that is uh, for the game of soccer to make it to the next level to take care of 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 the mental side of the game okay you know that um the the the, the dk academy was a result of once again the purpose after i retire well i have anything right i mean in a way of dedicating my life to something else right so GK Academy was born under that way. And then through the GK Academy, I found the purpose, right? Yes, we can, as coaches, talk about technical, tactical, physical, any any of those stuff. Now, the million-dollar question is, 
how do I get all of that into somebody's head? How do I get that into, you know, high, high, high standards, right? So, you know, the, the, the Academy, yes. I would say with, with all that, well, the other confidence that we're, we're probably the number one down here and, and, and preparing uh, goalkeepers to the next level. But um, the most, the most important thing is the culture that is around, right? The culture is what gives all these kids or all these athletes to find their purpose and to find their hungriness. So the mental side, answering your question, is the pillar of the academy. It's not a segment. It's not something that we do on a side. It's not a service. It's not something we provide. No, it's the main pillar of the academy, right? So, wow. you know, you want, like, you, you want to get better. Well, these are the requirements. Right. And the academy is 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 managed like a pack. Right. That's why I love that. That's why I broke with with those uh, standards of us small group training of three goalkeepers. No, no, no. I train. I can train 18 goalkeepers in one session. Right. And it's all about the culture and all about the expectations and standards that the academy raises up. Well, we're going to ask you to kick a ball properly. We're going to ask you to be connected properly. We're going to ask you to do these, 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 and these things so your teammate can actually get better, right? So, you know, when you, when, when you actually unify 10 guys, when you unify 10 guys into a mindset of winning, they just want to get better. They just want to get better. They just want to get better. They want to get better. They want to get better. And I'm not the guy that has to be telling you, hey, man, hey, remember that you got to kick the ball right. No, no, no. Your teammates are going to do whatever it takes to get you on track. You and if you don't if you don't get yourself on track, you're going to be re- you're going to feel very uncomfortable. Hmm. And when you feel very uncomfortable, you're going to say like, mm, "I don't know if this is the place that I want to be." Right? So, the system of the academy, the peers, the people that are not fully committed to things. Because the thing is, Hector, if I if I don't search for big time commitment and discipline under all of this, not only on in, in, in football, but in all aspects of the life. We we ask for their grades, we manage IDPs, we manage, you know, all these things to self develop people, not depending on us, to self develop them. Right? He's the one that, oh, I messed up. I gotta see. Right? Well I I gotta I gotta make it count. Oh, I gotta get an A. <laughs> right, so you know it's 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 a mental fight with with challenges and 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 all and, and all of these things. So you know this was born around almost yeah around like seven years ago. Um, that you know that we started with you know personal training of one or two kids because I really wanted to have fun without charging mm-hmm. them without doing anything. But what I what made me fell in love with was. Wow, I'm I'm actually developing somebody's life. I'm actually, you know, getting him better not only on the field, but when I touch those off the field things and see the improvement on the field because everything's like very very connected. Well, we got we got this explosion of of of, of winning culture that we got around. Um, we're almost more than 200, or I could say a lot more local goalkeepers. Wow, you know, three different counties. The coaches. The coaches were students from the academy that fell in love with every single thing that we do. Um, and obviously, you know, winning attracts winning. Mm. Um, and, you know, we, uh, we, we, we work with, with the best goalkeepers uh, uh, of, of, of the state. Uh, we got deals with MLS teams. We got deals with D1 colleges. We got deals with agencies. We got deals with, you know, multiple sources that uh that we that we're proud to say that we got 16 professional goalkeepers today um playing in in, in mls and usl championship usl one we got around 12 d1 students playing in colleges like boston like fiu like like marshall like um uh uh like um uh yukon uh you know guys that are actually competing at the next next level uh-huh. and then like the biggest biggest thing big time is 
you know, the, the professional off season that we work directly with clubs and agencies and everything. So professional goalkeepers come and do their off season over here to Miami with us. So, you know, it's, uh, but, oh, but, but it's, like I said, it's, um, it's, it's, you know, you know, I, I know, I know we're good in what we do, the coaches, the, the staff, you know, everybody, everybody that's around this is, is, is very capable of running a good practice. It's very capable of, of doing things right. You know, yeah. Because uh, those are the standards, you know. We're, we're, you know, we want to be the best, or we got to be the best. Other, like, yes, good until a point. The most important thing is the culture that is around. You know, yeah. when you know, when you want to, you know, when you surround yourself with the best, well, it just makes you better. A hundred percent makes you better. And with the kids, it's all self development. All I want is you not depending on your mom and dad telling you or clapping you on the back to do something. All I'm telling you is that not a coach is be clapping you on the back, telling you that you got to hit your extra reps or lose weight. Yeah. I'm teaching you how to do it by yourself. Yeah. Finding your purpose throughout goalkeeping. Right. So, wow. um, it's, uh, it's, it's, and obviously, you know, when, when it works like a pack, well, you got so many people committed to something that dropping a ball is a big deal. Mm. A bad pass is a big deal. Missing a cross is a big deal. Right, so the standards are higher and higher and higher and higher. And the most, but the most, the most important thing, and you probably experienced this having a private technification academy, is that you're gonna have a lot of haters when it comes to clubs, right? Don't get me started. <laughs> you know, especially when you're better than them in what mm -hmm. you do, right? So it's more than obvious, right? So that's that's something big time for me because okay, I do all this separate thing on a side, but you know, my kid or the kid or the goalkeeper, whoever we train is going to be playing in an environment. How can we make the, his path even yeah. better? Well, you know, it's all about how do we adapt everything that we do on a system, on a playing style, on a coach? Well, part of this is also having a great personality and having networking skills and not becoming mm -hmm. enemies with the top clubs. I'm yeah. here to support what you do. Not here 100%. to... Compete with you? No, 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 no. I'm not saying I'm the best. No, no, no. I'm saying that I care about that kid, and mm -hmm. I want the best for him. So what I'm doing on the side is for you, for also your club to get better, right? So um, yeah. No and, man, I mean it's it, winning culture. Winning culture and, and man, I was I was just hearing you. I was like just amazed about I mean what what you and your staff have built. Um, I mean. It sounds unbelievable. And and the cool thing is that I could send some of that as I was researching. Like I saw some of your pictures on social media and I saw you had like a shirt that it said like, all I know is, is win. Like stuff like you had like 1% every day, you know, 1% club 24 seven, like, you know, win is everything, like all these things. And I just, I just want to mention to you, like, I think you're doing it. I mean, you just said it, but I like also I, I could see it too that you have a really clear picture of what you want and you can see it like it's been transmitted uh, which man is awesome and it's really really awesome to see and hear more about all the things that that you're doing um no thank you all right guys sorry we had a little interruption but we're back um and we'll run all uh, i've loved everything that you've mentioned and I want to touch into something uh, as I was listening to one of the other podcasts that you recently did. Um, and you said very specific, like I'm going to quote kind of like what you said, because um, you were talking about your career and what, what you were doing now with the Academy, but you were saying, you know, that you, you wanted to give everything back to a sport that gave you everything to you. And and it, and then you said like how you wanted to help goalkeepers achieve their potential, but also human beings. So I love that uh, how you not only focus on the athlete but also human beings, but also the world giving. And and I, I think that's so so important. And you know I just wanted to ask you how has giving has impacted your life so far, and if you think giving is crucial, it's a crucial factor for success. Um, actor, uh, giving, giving is everything, okay. you know, giving, giving is everything from, from, uh, and especially when you give it with a very healthy 
from a very healthy source, right? And pretty much what I, what, what I mean with this is, you know, me giving or expanding what the game gave to me, first, it means everything for me because it, 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 you know, it represents my life. I wouldn't have been the person who I am without this, right? So, it, you know, it, it is probably like the most important thing in my life, right? So giving it and just thinking about how can I, you know, make somebody live a little bit of what this gave me, I know that I'm saving, and I'm, I'm, I'm not playing Superman or Batman over here. I'm just saying that, uh, like, it's going to help your life a lot, right? Yeah. And, and I don't say it from a, you know, from, from a very unrealistic uh, standpoint, because being very honest, nobody is going to be, a lot of people are not going to be able to play a World Cup. A lot of people are not going to be able to play professionally right you know that you know I, besides you know besides all the work that i put in everything in my career well i was very lucky too to be on the spot and to be you know one percent of luck right mm. that's, that's where i see it one percent of luck the 99 percent that's all the work we put in but you know um not everybody's gonna have that but i stay with the other parts of it well you know this made me a better son this made me a better husband this made me a better uh, a better family member you know goalkeeping um taught me how to be a leader right mm -hmm. not only on a team but a leader of my family for an example and i'm still a leader of my family um you know all those roles that are that are very very important in life right so i do understand the you know how deep it goes how deep it goes and and, and the way it can actually help you right and once again, mentioning for the tenth time, you know, looking at it from a very spiritual, uh, spiritual side, um, you know, the more I give in, the more I give in, the more things I get, right, and expand, right. You know why? Because, you know, um, at at high levels of the game, well, everything is very, you know, robotic, and everything is very, um, you know, everything's based on stats and all that kind of stuff, and you know, getting or or, or getting the best potential of somebody, it's, it's, it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard. Right. So, you know, we're, we're, we're back to, you know, the, the, the main, the main thing, which is the purpose uh, yeah. for me as a coach is, well, how can I give and how can I teach you to find the purpose of this with the vehicle of football? Right. Okay. That's, 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 that's the most important thing. Right, but I gotta, exactly. I gotta, I gotta teach you how to find that purpose in yourself, so you can use a ve, you can use a football vehicle, so you can achieve yeah. something. Right, so being very honest, I'm not expecting that every single student becomes a D1 player. I'm not expecting that they're gonna play professional. I'm not expecting any of that because that's not my main purpose. My purpose is not getting everybody into pro level. I enjoy it, yes. Like I love, you know, turning on ESPN and watching three of my guys playing in there. Yeah. Um, love it, right? But uh, the reality is that those are three out of a thousand or a exactly. hundred thousand, right? So, yeah. Um, what happens with the rest, right? So it's very unrealistic to think that they're all going to be at that stage. It's not. Yeah. It's not for everybody, right? So yeah. for me, is okay. How get how you know how important is giving? Because I know that a guy like that or a kid like that. If he gets better on his grades, if he becomes a better family member, if he coaches him on every practice, you know, if you if you, if you get that profile of people by giving, well, first I'm 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 gonna be the happiest guy in the world, which I am, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I know that that you're changing somebody's life throughout the vehicle of football, right? Yeah. So I'm giving what it gave to me. Yeah, a kid that had no opportunities. They have no college degree, barely finished high school, but the vehicle of football will learn me how to how to manage my money, for example. It learned it taught me how to speak three different languages. It taught me how to um, sit down in a meeting and discuss something with a coach. It, it, it taught me how to be accountable. It taught me how to be responsible and disciplined, right? And being completely independent when I was a younger kid. 
right? Yeah. So those are things that they do not teach in school, that nobody will tell you anything about it because it scares the crap out of people. Mm. As simple as that. Yeah. An adult is scared when he listens to discipline, accountability, all responsibility, uh, wake up early, good grades. Oh, shit, it's too difficult. Mm. Right? So believe it or not, you know, I'm giving what those things, you know, I applied in my life throughout the vehicle of football. Right? Yeah. So for me, giving that to somebody else is a treasure. Because I it's know everything. that if I, if I reach that with them, throughout the vehicle of football, I know he's going to be a better student. I know he's going to become a better son. I know he's going to be a, a full committed player that's going to give you the best on his practice, and you're going to have to clap him on the ball. Oh, come on, hey, man. Mm, you know, take it serious. No. Mm. Right? So, you know, we're going to cut all those, you know, very unrealistic patterns that athletes have at the day. Um, lack of motivation. Lack of commitment. Lack of, yeah. How do I get this kid fueled up? Mm -hmm. on every single thing that he does in his life. How do you give him purpose? Exactly. Right? Instead of sitting down and playing a video game, for an example. Right? Yeah. You know why? Because they always can choose. They can always choose. They can always say, well, today I'm going to buzz my butt off training because it makes me happy. Or I can just sit down and, you know, do something else, which is totally valid as well. It's totally yeah. valid. The thing is that you can't play both roles. Exactly. Right? You can't be a horrible person off the field and then pretend that you're going to be a top guy on the field. We spoke about at top levels. This is a position of trust. A coach's opinion is a position of trust. Well, if I see a kid that is not even capable of doing his own homework, I can't expect that I'm going to tell him to come out on the 90th minute for a cross when he's losing 1-0. Because exactly. I just don't trust him. No. I just don't feel him capable of doing big tasks on his life. Right. So now when you teach through giving, well, I'm going to put you in a very hard, you know, position in your life that you got to, that you got to, you know, that you got to improve on this, on this, on this, on this, this, and that. You know that your game is going to come from here to all the way over here because your head is used to completing tasks. Exactly. As simple as that. I know uh -huh. that, that you're not going to get scared when I pass you the ball back with high pressure because exactly. I know that you're capable of studying for a test without your mom telling you to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So I mean, giving, giving for me is everything. I give everything. that to them, they win. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and and it, 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 it's crazy because like, um, you know, I, I talk with uh, our coaches here and, and we we talk always about like how our, our job, it's, it's one of the most important jobs in the world. Right? Because world. I mean, you said it. The world. Like, uh, kids these things that they learn through sports you don't learn them in school you learn them with family with your parents it's like so that's why our job is so so important like I, we talk with our coaches like look what you have you meet for example one hour a week with that player and that's it four times a month for example it's like look what what impact can you make in that hour you know because it's like it, it's so important you know our our our, our job it's it's crucial for for the crucial, future and, and like you said i mean it, for it's people. not about for people. for people yeah it's not about making it to a professional level it's oh, not about yeah. playing MLS. It's, yeah. it's just creating better people creating better human beings creating future leaders yeah. right i mean it's, sure. it's all about that for sure and yeah. but you know by the time they get older they're gonna start facing a lot more challenges in their life mm. you know as simple as that school gets harder yeah you know if you get older, well, getting a, a good job position gets harder. If you play at the high level, well, it's going to get a lot harder. Mm -hmm. you know, okay, how do, we, how do we create that thing in their head to make them adapt themselves to high-performance environment? You want to succeed in life? Well, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not a pro, but okay, you went to school and you graduated from something. Well, you, 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 know, you want to be the general manager of your company. You, you know that you're going to have to work a lot. Yeah. You're going to have to compete against other people and they're going to make your life miserable and they're going to do whatever it takes to bring you down. And, and there are no, you know, so everything becomes harder. You, you know, you yeah. go, you go from, 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 from fifth to, to sixth grade. Well, the test, the, the test is going to be different in sixth grade. Yeah. Right. If you go to seven yeah. to eight, the same thing. If you jump into college, well, education gets higher. Right. So um, it, it is a race against everything. Yes, right. So if we don't if we don't 
you know, we don't provide that, uh, especially since since younger ages. Um, it's 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 gonna be very hard. And Stuff. if we look at it as a coach, well, unfortunately, that kid would not be able to reach his next level because there's a bunch of mental barriers over here. And 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 listen, it's like I you know I have meetings with with uh with 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 the parents of, of the academy very very often i'm on the phone all day i was like listen this so, you know you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta talk to them a lot because the reality is that like you said listen you, we we have them one hour a day or two hours a day yeah but what happens with the other 22 hours of the day <laughs> you see what i mean so it's yeah. very easy just to disconnect and 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 uh and 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 do all these things, right? So, um, you know, giving is everything. Giving, giving yeah. that is everything. Because it's to, people, it's not players. A hundred percent. And to your comment about, I mean, you're talking to parents. I mean, I saw you share today in your social media, which I shared because I loved it about the Notre Dame coach talking about uh, sometimes he even makes a change his decision on recruiting a player just because of the parents. Right. He wants to see the parents and how involved they are and how they react to certain things. And I just wanted to point that out because that, I think that that's part of it, too. You know, I mean, especially working with younger kids, um, you know, kids that are not independent yet. It's like I think it's important that there's that that connection, you know, with with the parents and, and making sure things are running smoothly. And I think it's it's very important. Um, but. Now, what are, what are your next steps? What are the next steps for the academy? What are the next steps for Ronald moving forward? I know you're with Inner Miami. You have a lot of connections. It seems like you have stuff, a lot of stuff going on, which is awesome. So, what what is next for you? You know, uh, it's it's um, it's uh, you know, at, at at this stage, at this stage of my life, um, I'm 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 enjoying again, you know, everything that I do. I'm enjoying everything again. Um. I, I did I do have some some uh, some MLS offers as well um, but uh, but you know being I say it out loud uh, what, what really makes me happy is just being around everything that I built right so I'm, I'm at the stage that um, that, that we're growing as, as, as an academy we're growing as as a bunch of other as, as a bunch of other things um, uh, for, for the next step it's just growth. This growth on, on on every single on every single aspect that we've been doing as an academy as a you know as a coach I'm, I make sure that every single day of my life is 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 worth it from studying from from working out from 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 every single thing that I do so I, I know I'm a I mean like in in a constant growth but um but you know the main the main thing is um you know the academy growing there is a big big massive project coming up uh in january i can't say it right now but you, you'll see it around i got it very hidden but i think that's going to be the next step it's just an expansion of 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 every single thing that, that that we've been doing over the years but um but it's just growth growth on, awesome. on every single thing growth oh i'm very excited to see what that next thing is for you and and last questions um Let's assume that today was literally your last day coaching ever. You know, you cannot coach anymore. You cannot be around the game anymore. This is your last day. There's no tomorrow. What message would you leave for players, human beings, for what message would you like to leave there that it's like stays there forever? As kind of like your message, your legacy, or whatever it may be. Yeah, you know that um, if this was today, I know that I've that the legacy of what we've been doing, they under they, they would understand they, they would understand the the message very well. I don't even have to say it. I, you know, I I totally I'm I'm, I'm very very uh, sure about that. Um, but the message is just keep being the one percent. Just keep being the one percent of the people. That would be that would be the last message. And I know it's so deep for so many people that are around us that they would definitely understand. And the second message is that you won't get rid of me because I'm going to come back from the dead. I'm going to be back. I don't know how, but I'll be back. 
Awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, well, man, uh, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for everything. And, and last thing, I just want to acknowledge you for, for everything that you've done, everything that you've built, uh, especially, man, from Venezuela. That, that means a lot to me, you know, seeing uh, other Venezuela in another part of the United States, coming from Venezuela here, and I think we both know how hard that process is. And just seeing that, you know, you're there and you're making an impact, that makes me extremely happy. And, and I just want to acknowledge you for that because um, it takes courage, it takes leadership, it takes a lot. And I don't know, I feel like that's what Venezuelans are known for, to go somewhere and make an impact, you know? Uh, and it makes me happy uh, that our, our path crossed, you know, through the coaching a program that we're both studying at. Um, but I just wanted to point that out because I was impressed with what you were doing while I was doing research, but now after this conversation, man, I'm even more and it's awesome. And I just wish you, man, all the success, all the success, because man, I mean, I think you have it, you're killing it. So just wanted to acknowledge you for that, man. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you know, once again, um, you know, w w w one of the w one of the things that, that I make sure of, that, you know, that is part of my life every single day, and it's connected to giving. You know what we were talking about is that, you know, you you you, you know, I I just love this too much. Like mm -hmm. I, I just love it too much in a way that I can't even control it. Right. So you know, it makes me happy being a living inspiration for a lot of people around me. It makes me very very happy. Right. So if I can give, if I can keep giving and expanding and providing everything that is that has given me, well. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna be very, very happy, right? Yeah. So, um, I think that's a, that's a very, you know, a very deep message to, to everybody, right? You know, finding, finding the, the, the purpose and the love for every single thing, and, you know, like I tell all my athletes, you know, pressure, it's always a privilege. Mm. It's always a privilege. You know why? Because well, not all the people are able. To be spot on pressure nobody can be standing in front of pressure and react to it when you see it different i got a lot of pressure and a lot of people depending on me but i don't see it that way i see it in a way of like i'm so privileged i'm so grateful okay. i'm so happy that whoever created this for me will you know place me on that spot and feel so so privileged about it right so you know if i can keep giving you know for example this conversation that we have I just feel that I gave everything that I had. I gave everything. Mm -hmm. I gave all the love for the kids, for the people that are listening. I'm just very, very grateful in my present. So, you know, anything that could help others, it's always going to make me a better person. And it's just like a snowball. It just keeps coming and, and become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, um, and it's that snowball, it's just all that positiveness and people around, people that want to win, people are cheating stuff. It's so great. You know, it's so great. So uh, I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm very grateful of, of, of your invitation. Um, more than, you know, more than obvious that whatever, whatever you guys need from me, uh, I'll, I'll give my 100%. So I'm very, very awesome, grateful. Thank you so much, my friend. And, and well, we'll definitely be in touch. And again, thank you for your time. All right. I'll see you, mate. Have a good one. Bye.